I keep my slip in a plastic jar. I use M340 clay from Plainsman because it's a good fit with my other clay body. I just put pieces of it in the jar and cover it with water for a couple of days to soften and then it's ready for me to whisk. I use an electric mixer and I do this right in the jar. I like my slip consistency to be like stiff egg whites. As I lift the whisk out of the slip, you'll notice that the peak keeps its shape. It doesn't fall or melt into itself. I like this consistency because I can be really precise when I decorate my pots and the texture feels interesting on the finished piece. Next, I need to strain my slip. I do this using a Wilton disposable pastry bag. I've been using this bag for over a year, so they last a long time and they work really well. I like to fold over the top so that it stays clean while I'm straining. And then I place the bag in a pot to help hold it up while I fill it. To strain the slip, I use a mesh fabric. This is actually a microwave splatter screen and it has nice small holes that will make the slip smooth. I place it in the bag and scoop my slip into the mesh. As I'm scooping, you'll notice that there are some pieces that didn't get mixed in properly. And this is what I am trying to leave behind. I only want the smoothest slip as I decorate with a cone that has a very small opening. I also like to keep the top of my slip jar really clean. If there's any bits of clay along the top, they can dry out and get crusty and then they're more difficult to mix in with the slip. And then I make sure to screw the lid on nice and tight. To strain the slip, I bring the edges of the mesh all together, separate from the bag. And then I hold the bag under the fold that I've made to squeeze while I twist the mesh and pull it out of the bag. As I'm squeezing and pulling, it's forcing the slip through the small holes in the mesh, leaving only the smoothest slip down in the bag while all of the gunk stays behind in the mesh. Then I squeeze all of the air out of the bag and fold it down. And secure it with a clothespin. This amount of slip will last me for a couple of weeks. And as you can see, left behind in the mesh is all of the gunk that would clog my cone. This is how I make the cone that I use to decorate my pots. It's made from a piece of cellophane and it's rolled into a cone shape and taped into place. This is the same tool that I use when I do henna this looks easy, but it took me about 50 tries in order to make one decent cone when I was first learning. So if you would like to also use this tool, I would encourage you to look up an instructional video on YouTube. The hole for the cone is very small, which allows me to be very precise. And that's why I want my slip to be as smooth as possible. To fill the cones, I use my larger storage bag and put it in the top of the cone and squeeze with my thumb, which helps to force the slip down into the tip of the decorating cone and keep the top neat as I pull it out. This way there's no mess and the clay doesn't get crusty and dry. Then I use two pieces of tape to secure the top of my cone. 
This cone is made from cellophane from a gift basket. You can also use floral cellophane or a wrappings from vegetables. It just has to be thin, crinkly cellophane that can keep its shape while, when you roll it into a cone. And now I have nice smooth slip to use.